Uh, so what I want to do now is to give some reflections, I think from, or my interpretation of a more in-house and SRC perspectives, perspective. So my starting point for this short, short talk is that ecosystem services uh, are generated by social and ecological processes in an interlinked social ecological systems. So I think most of us here in the audience are kind of familiar with that perspective. It's been kind of clearly articulated in some recent publications by uh, Reyes et al, by Anderson and colleagues from the, ur from the urban context and von Heerland and Folke from the Madagascar work. But it has also framed the research that a lot of colleagues here at the SRC has been doing on ecosystem services uh, since the 90s, since the kind of starting point of uh, collaboration between ecologists and economists through the Bayer Institute. Uh, and that kind of, I think, very much framed the work that uh, Stockholm Resilience Center, or what, what also came before that, their work in, in the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. And from the socio-ecological systems perspective, often ecosystem services are, uh, um, inquiries are related to um, understanding the capacity of social ecological system to generate services and especially in, in the context of uh, disturbances of change, so um, uh, addressing resilience. So this is a figure from, from the Reyes uh, et al. publication that also Thomas and uh, other people in the room is, uh, are part of. Uh, so really emphasizing, uh, again, getting to the, some of the, the similar points that, that Eric and Kai made, that ecosystem services are actually coming out of, of uh, social ecological interactions. So they um, emphasize uh, to that figure, and I think it's slightly complicated, so I'm, I'm uh, for the point here to talk about the uh, aspect of culture in that. Uh, I made after discussions with, uh, with Eric Anderson uh, behind, more simplified version. So, so social ecological systems, um, are generating ecosystem services and the management uh, or governance system that's applied frame uh, the kind of services we, we uh, that's generated and but then also there's the feedback uh, to that so that the perception and appreciation appreciation of those services also uh, feeds back into the socio ecological system and, and uh, um, informs the kind of man management we do so what I'll do now is also to reflect a bit on research that I and other colleagues here have been doing about, about the cultural aspects of, of that kind of feedback loop. Uh, so how human nature connections as mediated through culture are, uh, are influencing, influencing the institutions, the social practices and the knowledge and the knowledge systems that in turn um, frame very much the ecosystem services that we both kind of manage for and appreciate. Uh, okay, so to talk more about that, then culture in that context. Uh, that, uh, so there's been quite a bit of research uh, here around institutions, for example, uh, both uh, taboos or social norms in, in local and traditional societies, but also the work here in Stockholm uh, on um, uh, property rights, etc., on kind of social and cultural management practices. Um, related to ecosystem services and, and also knowledge and knowledge systems, both by kind of myself and, and uh, um, uh, Per Olsson, for example, and also Beatrice and, and Arian in, in Kenya. And this was, is coming very much out of, of uh, the, the Linking and Navigating book that, that uh, Carl and Frickret and other colleagues were putting together, uh, also coming out of the Bayer collaborations, um, and again emphasizing the, res re the resilience implications of that. And I think a lot of the work that I and other colleagues have been done, I think now we, all of us more or less belong in the stewardship theme uh, of the Stockholm Resilience Centre. Um, and it's very much, it has been quite a lot of uh, place-based, bottom-up uh, um, studying of the generation of ecosystem services, of kind of smallholder farmers, fisheries uh, in Sweden and in other parts of the world, but also urban systems. Uh, so before proceeding, some reflections on what, what we mean by culture in this context. So here I'm also using uh, definitions, first one I borrowed from uh, Stefan and Newan. So culture really is a system that brings meaning and significance. I think it also relates very well, very much to how uh, Kai, who, how you talked about cultural ecosystem services in your talk. But also that culture con contains and transmits morality, uh, order and identity and shapes uh, social and ecological relations over time. And again, that it also really frames the, so it does frame the feedback mechanism within the system. 
so to, to explain or elaborate a little bit more what that means, uh, I'm talk, mention a little bit more about the work that I did in southern Madagascar in Andrui, uh, and how I and other colleagues are studying how cultural practices and institutions were governing the sacred forest um, in the landscape, uh, but also the ecosystem services that, that the, um, these forest patches were generating in the landscape. Uh, and uh, Jakob von Heerland and, and other colleagues, and including myself, took that as also a step further. So also showing more clearly how culture in this context is a moral attractor, how these cultural relationships between uh, people or the social system and the ancestral uh, domain is actually stabilizing the socio-ecological system, and, and it particularly over time. So this is a very uh, drought-stricken and quite harsh environment. And it is that kind of cultural uh, foundation or attractor that that enables uh, the livelihoods uh, to continue in spite of those uh, strong disturbances. And this is also what we find very much, uh, this is, uh, I want to share a little bit of work that's done with colleagues in Kenya, um, Gatrum Buru and, and other colleagues um, who are part of the African Biodiversity Network. So we're, we're, they're piloting a multiple evidence base to, and mobilizing local knowledge. And so they're working closely with communities who want to regenerate and restore a river uh, in their community. And, and what they do very much is to, uh, wh or what they did in their approach was to start mapping the sacred sites. Because the sacred sites along the, the river are key to, the, to governance and the capacity to actually address the challenges that, and the degradation of the river. For example, the destruction of the riparian habitats, etc. And the over-extraction of water from from the river. So here again, uh, the knowledge systems, the institutions, then it's, it's kind of very clearly founded in, in culture uh, um, that, that really frames the feedback. And so, but this is uh, two examples from, from very this kind of more traditional or local systems. And another recent uh, paper that I did with Eric Anderson and other colleagues from New York, we were really emphasizing that cultural ecosystem services can be a gateway to governance of ecosystem services also in cities. Uh, and here I'll, I'll use um, the story from Bangalore where my PhD student Yuan Inquist is working to study uh, uh, restoration of, of lakes, interconnected lakes in Bangalore. So Eric and I and colleagues were arguing that the, the benefit of cultural ecosystem services is that they are directly perceived and uh, appreciated. So people are, uh, aesthetic beauty, for example, is something that people directly appreciate. And in Bangalore, uh, it was actually a civic, a civic uh, groups that started uh, initiatives to restore these lakes, um, and, and often based on a very personal and emotional experience of, of the lakes themselves. So another thing that also Kai explained very nicely about how the multifunctionality of, uh, of cultural ecosystem services, they capture often bundles of ecosystem services. So in the case of Bangalore, the Bangalore Lakes, so the reason why people got engaged to resto restore them was because they thought it was beautiful, they could go and recreate it around the lake, but of course when restoring their lakes they were also enhancing the capacity to regulate uh, water flows in the city and, and uh, for, regulate for floodings, etc. And then uh, the third level here, that uh, engaging with cultural ecosystem service in the socio-ecological systems perspective, uh, it also enables to capture stewardship and sense of care and engagement by, uh, by people. So in also linking this engagement into the governance uh, structure. So also in Bangalore that um, you one and I are arguing in a recent paper in review, is that it, it also uh, um, creates potential or creates a new vision for changing the idea of how water is actually governed in the city. Uh, so it seems, and, and there's a lot of studies showing that cultural ecosystem services can contribute to stewardship, or there's something about cultural ecosystem services that, that matters. So in a recent review by Tobias Planinger and colleagues, they're saying that depending on the context, cultural ecosystem services can encourage um, the maintainers of valuable la landscapes, and act, but they could also act as barriers for necessary innovation and, um, and transformation. So the picture over there is a, from Vanessa's uh, work, my other PhD students in the Eastern Cape, where these kind of cultural values are really reinforcing and maintaining um, a system of, of um, migratory la uh, labor that also is part of a poverty trap in these landscapes. Uh, but to give a further example of that, we, in, uh, we are working on a paper also to review uh, the linkages between sense of place and resilience. So what we found in this review is that 
place attachment can contribute to, to protective and restorative environmental activities that, that is kind of, can be part of stewardship initiatives. Uh, but there was also mixed evidence uh, uh, for the relationship between place attachment and transformative capacity. Although place attachment and sense of place is often talked about as a key thing for, for transformability. Uh, so what we propose in this article is really it matters what kind of cultural ecosystem services and the meanings that, that these place attachment or, or sense of place, um, what, what meanings are linked to these specific places. And that's really what you need to engage with to understand what leads to kind of stewardship or more sustainable pathways uh, and what does not. Just to conclude, there's, uh, we need to engage more with actually the meanings uh, and the systems of meanings, so it's kind of more the individual and the collective part of that, uh, based on the human nature connections. And so I've been talking about different examples of this, how this can catalyze stewardship, how it can lead to innovations for stewardship governance in the Bangalore case, with this emerging co-management agreements around lakes. Uh, also the example from Kenya, how it can revitalize local uh, governance systems. And, and also, I haven't mentioned that further, but there's an interesting work by Stefan and Johan Kolding, for example, on cognitive resilience uh, based on recognizing diversity of, of, um, uh, of cultures. So I, well here, I, I think I'd like to say that cultural ecosystem service can be a useful entry point to talk about these things in, in this context of ecosystem services. Um, and that's also, I think, Milko constructively argues that it can be a space where you can add in these perspectives more. But there's also a lot of critique, of course, around these issues as Thomas started out. So that's a question of trying to force the genie back into the bottle or where we actually what is the most constructive way forward. But it's obvious that there's a lot of scope for further engagement with social science and social scientists um, to understand this better, but also with other knowledge systems beyond science. So there's a lot of, I think, insights of, from local and indigenous knowledge systems, really an understanding the role of culture, both for, for governing ecosystems and ecosystem services, but also for well-being. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.